does most of our steel output go? What are some of the vanishing uses for steel? How is steel's usefulness being expanded? Industry on Parade. Peabody Award winner for public service, produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. An ingot of white hot steel is lined up for a pass through the rolling mill. Big, powerful rollers press down on the slab of hot metal, flattening it out, increasing its length and width. The number of such ingots that pass through the rolls each day is a matter of vital concern to all Americans. For steel is one of our basic industries, in fact, the industry on which all others are dependent. A country lacking plentiful supplies of steel really has no industry at all, and even its agriculture is bound to be quite primitive on a par with its standard of living. Just how does steel figure in the standard of living? In every conceivable way, beginning with the automobile, the product of an industry that requires more steel than any other. Chassis, bodies, doors, floors, wheels, and accessories. In one year, auto manufacturers can account for 19 or 20 million tons of steel. The modern industrial plant in which these automobiles are being assembled represents another big segment of the market for steel. For as much as 14 million tons annually goes into the construction of factories, offices, homes, and other buildings. And a good percentage of the 16 million tons sold to small users through steel warehouses also finds its way into construction in one form or another. Making the machines and equipment of industry, like this giant press, also consumes many millions of tons of steel each year. The steel object being formed is a wheel for a railroad car. The railroads also are leading users of this important metal. Cans, drums, and other types of containers account for a sizable part of the output of the steel mills, and so does the petroleum industry, with its many thousands of miles of pipes, its derricks, storage tanks, and refineries. No wonder steel is regarded as the bellwether of the nation's economy, reflecting as it does conditions in all other industries. A healthy expanding oil refinery or electric company is bound to use more steel than one that's barely managing to hold its own. And that's just as true on the nation's farms, which together constitute one more of the steel industry's 10 leading customers. What does an industry do when it sees some of its markets, like that for armor plating, diminish or disappear? Well, fortunately, steel has never been dependent on battleships or tanks. But even some civilian markets have been eliminated by changing conditions. In fact, steel companies themselves have in some cases reduced the need for their product by making the product so much better that necessary replacements are few and far between. Take the piston rings being turned out here at the Wilkening Manufacturing Company in Philadelphia. So vast are the improvements made in piston rings over the years that today's rings last three times as long as those of a generation ago. Three times as durable, one-third the need for steel for this purpose. Or take horseshoes. Modern production methods, together with the drastically reduced demand for this item, mean that today a handful of companies can produce all the horseshoes needed, where formerly hundreds of firms turned them out. But as the need for horseshoes declines, the demand for steel for other purposes increases, for the autos that replace the horses, or for entirely new, unrelated products like vending machines. Just since World War II, hundreds and hundreds of new products have either been invented or made widely available. 
Consider, for example, the tremendous expansion of air conditioning. Or take the appliance field generally. Refrigerators, deep freezers, clothes washers and dryers, dishwashers, modern ranges, all either made of steel or requiring steel machines in their manufacture, usually both. Here on the threshold of the age of automation, factory tools are often truly fabulous. This massive instrument, product of the Cross Company of Detroit, is an example. It performs all sorts of precision jobs automatically. Milling, drilling, reaming, tapping, spot facing and counter boring. Right down to the specified thousandth of an inch. Not only does it do all this, guided solely by electronics, it even stops itself when one of the tools in the machine is worn down to the point where it can no longer do an accurate job and should be replaced. If you wait until a tool is completely gone, toward the end it will turn out bad work. But the control unit keeps track of the hours and minutes put in by each tool, and when time runs out, throws the switch. All this precision calls for steels that hadn't even been developed a few years ago. Horseshoe steel won't do. Nor will horseshoe steel suffice for the nose pieces of air-to-air -air missiles, being extruded here at Heinz Manufacturing Company in Philadelphia. In time, all defense weapons lose their effectiveness, but new ones take their place, and always they require steel. So too with developments like the commercial atomic power plants being built around the country. These are construction scenes at Shippingport, Pennsylvania, where Duquesne Power and Light Company now has the first such plant in operation, utilizing special steel pipes and containers designed for the purpose. Promising broad expansion of steel's uses in building construction are stainless steel curtain walls like those being installed on this New York skyscraper, panels that include decorative and protective sheathing, as well as Truscon steel window frames, are raised into position and installed in a matter of minutes. The sheathing and the windows are hurricane-proof, require no maintenance, will shed all dirt and grime when it rains. Inside the new buildings, privacy and quiet are assured with steel and glass partitionettes. Produced by Aetna Steel Products Corporation, the packaged private offices make it possible for a whole department to be subdivided or knocked down and reassembled overnight. This is one of the fields in which steel companies compete vigorously with each other and with the makers of equipment constructed of other materials. At one time, all office desks were made of wood. Then steel was introduced, and the wooden desk manufacturers countered with improved styling and a lot of other extras. The steel desk makers then came back with color variety, easy rolling drawers, and sound deadened interiors. And so the competitive struggle goes on. It goes on in many fields, to the benefit of all concerned, especially us consumers. Here at Goiter, Peschke and Fry of Milwaukee, it's ironing boards made of steel. Often the quest for new applications for steel finds the metal not competing against, but serving in conjunction with other materials. Here it's concrete a long beam of which has been reinforced with pre-stressed steel wire cables running through its center. Hydraulic jacks gradually build up pressure. 50,000 pounds, 75, 100, far more than the concrete could ever withstand unsupported. Finally, it gives way, but only at 220,000 pounds of pressure. Some new uses for steel, while they have virtually no effect on steel mill production volume, do reflect a determination by the industry to miss no tricks in making its product ever more useful. This is powder metallurgy, whereby iron and other metals in powder form are pressed into all sorts of intricate shapes, after which the briquettes are sintered in a furnace and come out solid. And this is a process called hard facing, in which new metal is added to take the place of that worn away in rugged work by equipment used, for example, on construction sites. Machines designed and built by the American Brake Shoe Company 
feed welding flux and welding wire into position where an electric arc fuses the metal onto the worn piece. This machine performs the operation automatically with the arc submerged in flux to eliminate the smoke and flash usually encountered in welding or brazing. Wires of various alloys are used according to the degree of hardness or other characteristics required. Alloying, the blending of metals with other metals, has been raised to a fine art. For a demonstration of that fact, we visit the Torrington Manufacturing Company in Connecticut, which manufactures spring coiling machines of all kinds. For each type of spring and each size, the coilers require a different type of steel stock, and they get it, whether it's an alloy used in hair springs for watches or this. One of the many remarkable achievements of the industry has been devising a way of obtaining the purest steel possible by remelting ingots within a vacuum. The melting is done here at Allegheny Ludlam Steel Corporation at Waterfleet, New York, by electric current. The vacuum draws off impurities along with gases freed by the process and leads to a super alloy metal capable of withstanding the greatest stresses and temperature ranges, one of the toughest metals ever refined by man. Another revolutionary development in operation here at Aliquippa, Pennsylvania at Jones and Lachlan is the basic oxygen furnace. Into this furnace, after it has been charged with scrap and molten iron, a stainless steel lance is lowered to direct a high pressure jet of pure oxygen at the metal. This is the lance descending into position. The oxygen sets off certain chemical reactions that refine the iron into steel with the speed and economy of the Bessemer converter and the product quality of the open hearth. Thus can the industry sell a metal more indispensable than gold for a mere eight cents a pound. Is it more indispensable than gold? Yes, yes indeed, for in addition to its use in every phase of ordinary life, steel is essential to national defense in guided missiles as we've seen and as here in the atom-powered, missile-carrying submarines that can roam the oceans ready to launch a counterattack within minutes of any enemy raid. One of the major bulwarks of our country's greatness, its strength in peace or war, is its ability to produce steel and the jobs and the high standard of living that come from steel. American industry, builder of a better tomorrow, has presented Industry on Parade, a service of the National Association of Manufacturers.